have to say, we have had moments on video. Um, number 13, what increases solubility of a gas in a liquid? Me. Oh, your purse, don't let it get marked. Your purse don't come out. Except hairspray is good. Good solvent. Really? Like yes, hairspray is an excellent solvent for pen. What um, about Sharpies? <laughs> uh, I would try hairspray. Sharpie, I would try alcohol. Huh? I would pretty much hit it with everything I've got that won't stain the fabric. Oh, my purple that? Sharpie got like this big old ink spot on my Oh, my Hairspray is yeah, a pretty good solvent. It's worth a try. I think you would this one day. I've worn with boots. You wouldn't have seen the purple. You showed me. Nail polish removes a good solvent, but it'll I probably fade the fabric, so it'll ruin it know. anyway. I don't know. You said you had a mark on it sometime. Hairspray won't ruin your fabric. Okay. Um, Unless you set it on fire. Unless it's really delicate, but sweat should be fine. Yeah. Like silk, not so much. Um, so anyhow, solubility of a gas in a liquid. Uh, so if I want to keep something. my soda from going Actually? flat, I want to oh. keep my gas uh, dissolved oh, in my liquid. Oh. Uh, cold. Cold. So, pressure yes. And okay, keep the lid on. Keep the pressure. You need um, cold. So, though. increase pressure, decrease <clears throat> temperature. Right? If I want to make somebody's soda go flat, what do I do? Heat, heat it up. Heat. Okay, increase heat, decrease pressure. Keep the lid off and the heat on. Decrease. Leave it in the car with the lid off. Decrease, uh, decrease temperature. Right. Uh, number 14, what increases the solubility of a solid in a liquid? Mm -hmm. So, this. how do you get your sugar to dissolve in your sweet tea? Stirring. Heat it. Stirring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, heating. It's way easier to brew the hot tea, put the sugar in, and then cool it down yeah. than it is to get the powdered sugar to dissolve in the, um, in the cold liquid. Getting things to dissolve Stirring. in cold liquid is hard. So Isn't that increase, like crushing too? Yes, powdered sugar will dissolve better than crushing. granular sugar and even better than like rock sugar or sugar cubes. So stirring and crushing increase the rate of, uh, of dissolving. Stirring, this is important too. Stirring and crushing increase the rate of solution, <clears throat> but will they increase the amount of sugar that can dissolve in water, for yeah. example? Increase no. the what in solution? Rate. Increase rate. If you stir and you crush your powder before you put it in, then you will increase how fast it dissolves. But you won't get more of it dissolved than the liquid can hold. There's only one way to increase the and amount heating? of sugar that you can dissolve. That's heating? He heating it. Okay. Heating it increases both the speed at which it dissolves and the amount that you can get in the liquid. So heat, stir, and crush. Heating having the most to increase solubility of a solid and a liquid. So that's number 14. Number 15. What happens to the freezing point of a solution when something is dissolved in it? So let's say, uh, what happens to the freezing point of water that has a bunch of sugar dissolved in it? Mm -hmm. Freezing point decreases. So. Um, Colligative properties, which are things like freezing point depression, uh, boiling point elevation, um, there's one more I can never remember, uh, they always increase in extreme. When you dissolve something, um, let's say if you have a solution of salt water or sugar water, I'm guessing the freezing point increases. The, the freezing point. decreases so it'll freeze colder at a colder temperature than normal water. The boiling point increases. It'll boil at a hotter temperature. So say salt water is going to freeze at you know negative five degrees Celsius depending on its concentration and um, such and uh, sugar water is going to boil at a hundred and you know three degrees Celsius. Well, I don't know about that one yet. Um, and what's the equation one. that controls just said this? Decreases. <laughs> Boiling point decreases. Yes. We wrote increase. Increases. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Boiling I was point like, increases no. for a solution. Freezing point decreases. And what's my Tried equation? Tried to lie to me. Um. Hmm? Tried to lie to me. Mm -mm. Decrease. Then what's the thing? I can't remember. Include these equations on oh, your I. sheet. 
What equations? No, what? What equations? A constant of some kind and... We're writing those so equations? Math. Are we writing that? What are we yeah, writing? once I get it right, write it okay. down. <laughs> what are you, what are you trying to... What are you doing? <laughs> that was yawning. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so these variables are different than you might expect. So what is it? Is that mean? a C or a K? It's a K. It's a K. K. It's a constant. Oh. It was a C because I use C for constant. Oh, okay. So that's the that's the uh, equation. Yes, delta but what does it mean? Okay, delta T means change in M temperature, K. right? So I. if water, if the solute. Oh, that's this crazy solvent. one. If the solvent, I which is normally one. water say freezes at zero, but the solution freezes at negative two, then delta T is negative two, right? Yeah. Um, and what does M mean? Because this is a trick. It's not mass like it usually is for M. Molality. 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 And what is molality? Oh, um, uh, I think it's, um, isn't it something times Liters number or something over here. Okay, yeah. it's moles, moles per liter of solute oh. over kilograms <laughs> of solvent. <laughs> okay. So that's yeah. what that means. Oh, okay. The molality is. Everybody write this. this is so molality. the M. The M. Oh man, how am I supposed to write this? The K on another piece of paper. Yeah. Or you'll <laughs> be calculating it. K, I'll give you, um, it's a constant, water's boiling point constant and water's freezing point constant are just constants that will be on your test if you need them. So um, the rest of it will be on there. So this would be like KB if it's the boiling point constant, because if you're trying to see what the boiling point will be, it'll be KF if it's the freezing point. Okay. I knew there was a B. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. okay. Don't confuse this with molarity, not morality, molarity, which is moles of solute per liters of total solution. Okay. These two things are very important to know. Wait a minute. This is our normal standard concentration unit. Goodness, that's annoying. The capital M. Sorry about the banging, guys. Well, at least we have a ceiling. True. I didn't get to. I didn't get to watch the people come in. It didn't work. Creepy. Can you email this? I cannot yeah. email. I can. Uh, you can. I can. I'll email you because I don't know if I'll be able to watch that again. I want to come to your house and see you email it because if I could <laughs> learn how to do that, that would be really, really great. Is that so solution? Solution. S O L I mean solution. Solution. Yes. This is your normal, like, go to solution making and stoichiometry unit. Molality is really only used for collegiate problems boiling point, elevation, freezing point, depression. Ice cream making, for example. Really? Um, so what does that I mean? Um, uh, oh, it's a uh, uh, invisible number. I is for ion. Invisible number. <laughs> right. It's so uh, let's What's say called? sugar. Unknown number. What's the I in algebra two? Let's say sugar uh, is my uh, uh, solute. What would I be for sugar? How many particles will it form when it's dissolved? How many particles? Oh, aren't we just supposed to add those up? No, because sugar's still valent. I is one. It stays as one big molecule when it's dissolved. It's covalent. Oh, okay. and, but ionic if it were ionic. Yeah. Okay, so here's an ionic. If this is my, my solute, then what's I? What doing? I is two. I have a okay. question. Why is it two? You'll get an six. Na plus ion and a Cl minus ion. C6. For every yeah, uh, unit of sodium chloride, you get two ions when it's dissolved. Oh, okay. 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 So how about... I equals one. Magnesium phosphate. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> NaCl. I equals two. 
and a plus. We're still on, we're still on 15, right? I don't know where we are. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, we're still on 15. If magnesium phosphate is my solute, then what's the chemical formula for magnesium the, phosphate? The Cu6H12O6. That's this I. This is sugar. It's mm -hmm. ionic. This That's is a I. 6. I mean covalent. Covalent. So what's I? That's I? That's I the I for any covalent is 1. So covalent. Because it one piece. Covalents are always 1. If it's ionic, you that can see helps. how oh many ions. God. I've actually told you this before, amazingly enough. Yes, yeah, I don't remember that. I just know. This is why I give a final. I would normally say it's useless, but this actually makes you learn. You learn like probably 20% of everything you learn this week. Or what you'll retain, anyway. Um, this will help you in college. I, I don't forgot do this that it was like that. I was trying to remember how to do that. That's I was like, I don't I do remember this. this. Magnesium phosphate. How do I write it? Magnesium phosphate? Oh, M G. M G. Phosphates. It's P phosphate is it PO4? PO4 what? Uh, positive. No, not out. So, we write that. Are we supposed to? Oh, okay. Phosphate. Can I have my thing back now? Yeah. I kind of need that. Come on. So, why do you put it in parentheses? I you mean, have the, so you can't put it up on the top, you have to put it as like a subscript, just to make sure. You never put stuff up at the top. Yeah, the, the charges switch and become subscripts. Okay, so, so never put it as a charge again. Not you when you're writing the formula. So what's I here? How many pieces will this ionic thing split into? Three plus... Oh, five. 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 Five is five. Oh, Jeez, see, how do you do that? That's so, what I was thinking of, uh, but I, I said that for I see. I see. I, I, shut up, shut up. I see. So, I didn't say a word. You're like, a, oh, shut up. No, shut up. I got it. So I'm stealing my stuff, man. <laughs> I need this. So you'll get three magnesium ions and two phosphate that. ions when it dissolves. Right. Okay, three magnesium ions will form and two phosphate ions will form when it dissolves. And that means that it will be the most effective uh, solute to put into your solvent to increase the boiling point or decrease the freezing point. When I is bigger, it has a more effect on boiling point and freezing point, right? So let's say... I don't want my auntie to fall when she comes to my house on the icy sidewalk. Which one of these things am I going to put on the sidewalk? NaCl. This one. Oh, no, no. <laughs> this is Isn't that salt? Though? NaCl salt. This is a salt too. Oh. They're chemists, not chefs. Darn. This is a salt. If you're a chef, you don't want to use that as a salt. But if you're a chemist, you want to use this to not make your sidewalk freeze because I is bigger. Um, and. Just to review, just to make sure we're all clear, how, like, this is absolutely nothing to do with number 15. This is just a random question from me. Um, how many magnesium atoms are in one, uh, one ionic compound -y molecule, which isn't a molecule, but, you know, thing of magnesium phosphate? How many magnesium atoms? Two. Two. Three. <laughs> and how many phosphate atoms? Two. Four. Eight. And how many oh. oxygen atoms? <laughs> Four. Four. No. Eight. Eight. So how many total atoms in one unit of magnesium phosphate? Thirteen. I can't add that fast, but sure. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, thirteen. Eight plus two is easy. And I can add. Um, On the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that you memorize your polyatomic ions or you will have massive problems. Justin. <laughs> you knew them once upon a time. Y'all did such a good job. <laughs> okay. So, what is the pressure? This is 16. What is the pressure of two moles of propane, ga propane gas, not propane because that's different, propane. at 25 degrees Celsius in a one liter tank? Uh, so well, it sounds like we have to do some math. Some, some math, and what's our equation? So what do we know? When you get a math problem and you're rusty, you don't know what you're doing, what do you do? Stoichiometry. What is the pressure? 
of two moles of propane gas. Do y'all remember what we call moles in math sometimes? We'll get there then. Moles per meter? Um, at 25 degrees Celsius and a one liter tank. What does one liter tell you about back. this amount of gas? Huh? What is a liter a measurement of? She can mail it back. Oh. Mm -hmm. Condensed. What is liter measure? I thought I just heard you say it. Volume. Okay. So what does this look like to you? It looks like that problem. I don't have the I don't have the equation up there yet. Huh. But look what you have. You have P V N is mole. Oh, this is the uh, uh, combine or it's a gas law. Yeah. Right. It is. is this is the combined? combined gas law. Um, PV equals nRT, and n That's is moles. Formula, this is a, one of those weird moments when it's not called the right thing. R is a constant. Yeah, it's at number like eight point mm -hmm. something. And it's on the final, so don't panic. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> like eight. <laughs> Isn't it like zero point? That was eight zero eight something. two one. Oh yeah, and it's like horrible units. Zero zero eight. I got You got the A. Something. Well, they can't see it. <laughs> but what is? Oh here, what is the key thing to remember about temperature and um and gas laws? It's changing. It's going to change to. All gas laws require only Kelvin temperature. If I give you a gas law problem, Boyle's law, Charles law, uh, combined gas law, and I give you temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit, it must be in Kelvin. I don't think I give you any Fahrenheit on this because that conversion is annoying and I don't remember it. Thank you. I actually know. <laughs> so make sure we change so all Celsius to Kelvin before we do the problem. The all Celsius to Kelvin for gas law. It's minus oh. Celsius. Uh, so what? how do you change what Celsius to Kelvin? Celsius change. What do I add to Celsius to get Kelvin? To Kelvin. Must. Unless we change the Kelvin. Okay. So, is that the number we always use? Is 273? 273 is the conversion factor between Kelvin and Celsius. So we just add it. Yes. That's all we do. Right. Because Kelvin just makes it so you can never, ever reach zero mm -hmm. degrees. Okay. So you're always going to add a big number to it. Okay. Okay. Because okay. um, you can't ever, you don't ever want to get a zero in a denominator. Do we have to remember what? that? You'll have to know the 273. I don't okay. give you that. Please memorize 273. Did the lights just look like that? It did, yes. Okay. Um, probably because they're banging on everything. Um, with two moles, surely on the test I was better, but I'm going to give you three significant figures just so we can do this problem. All right, so go ahead and find the pressure of that tank. Uh, calculator. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you have it, Noah? So we don't know the P. Oh, you have it? I know. You, you uh, okay. You have to divide. <laughs> so what's the N? What's the little N? N is moles. Oh, N is the moles? N is moles, which is a weird thing. So N yeah, it's equals out moles. moles. So okay. Oh, so then you have to do, it's going to be P equals oh, we gotta have it change. 2 times so 0 0.0821 times. Sorry. This is why I don't give in class finals. I talk. You've noticed. No, I talk out loud to figure out what I'm doing. Thank you. 
Done. How many see that? One. One. Wait, how many significant figures do you put there? Yes, you have to pay attention to your significant figures. You There's only have, one. You can only have two. Two? Because okay. of the volume is your limiting factor. So I added three. some. Maybe you didn't notice I added. Oh, I didn't see. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't see that. Because I was being lazy before. I think I got the answer. Oh, wait, it's 49? Yep. Oh, right, you have to round up. Yeah, okay. Is it Kelvin over liter, though? It's atmosphere. Oh, I didn't put the other things in. You cancel your mole and you cancel your Kelvin. You're left with atmosphere. Atmosphere. And yes, I give you R, but I don't give you the 273. Kelvin. R is a very useful number in many, many things, not just this. R appears in activation energy equations, too. Why does the tank feel cold after okay. use? So you have your propane tank. You know how like, you can test the propane tank's fullness by pouring water on it and you see the condensation? Okay, well, why does the propane tank feel cold so that water will condense on it? Why does it get cold when you're using it? Is it something that's an endothermic reaction or? Well, let's look at the equation. Okay, so let's say if you're looking at your propane tank, um, can your pressure change? Yes, pressure can change. As you use gas, the pressure in the tank will decrease, right? Because there's less stuff in there. Can your volume change on a propane tank? No. No, it's a metal tank. It doesn't change the volume. It's the same size all the time. So volume is a constant. Um, can the number of moles of gas change? Well, yeah. Um, R is a constant. And temperature obviously changes because that's what we're interested in, right? So... We know the temperature is cold, right? Well, what happened? Uh, we're using it, right? The so, right? So, when um, if if temperature gets colder, what happens to when we're using it? Pressure will do what? Decrease. Pressure decreases, right? So moles of gas is also decreasing. Why am I not making any sense? <laughs> pressure decreases as temperature decreases. Well, we have to assume constants everywhere else. We're assuming constants in these guys. So what does this look like? Is this a direct proportion or an inverse proportion? I'm so confused. Okay, when you're trying to figure out if you have a direct proportion or an inverse proportion, solve for your constant. So you have pressure over temperature, right? So if one goes down, what has to happen to the other one to go down to keep your constant constant? It has to go up. If you divide by a smaller number, you're right. This is a direct relationship. Pressure goes down as temperature goes down. And you can see that even with a balloon, if you get a balloon cold, if its temperature is going down, its pressure goes down, it kind of deflates, right? So. so when your propane tank is used, your pressure is decreasing because you're using some. So, pressure is so your temperature is going to go down. Pressure is decreasing, so temperature goes down. While we're at it right there, uh, see that giant list at the end there? Yeah. Which I'm not going to go over because you guys can look up definitions without my help. Um, what is gas law? So we have the combined gas law, which is what we just used. What's Boyle's law? Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, PV equals constant, or P1V1 equals P2V2. 
So I always think of Boyle's Law being when we squish the little syringe full of green stuff, right? And we looked at the, the volume changes, we added pressure. Okay? So as pressure increases, so we'll make this a constant. As pressure increases, what happens to the volume? As pressure what? Increases? What as happens to the volume? As pressure increases, so like I have a little syringe full of fluid with some gas in it. The volume should The volume of the gas will decrease as pressure increases. Right? So this is an inverse relationship. Okay, I can Boyle's that. law could be said that uh, pressure is inverse, uh, inversely related to volume. How about Charles' law? Charles' law is V over T equals constant, or V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay, so what this is saying is um, you have a direct relationship between volume and temperature. Okay, but the propane tank doesn't give us either because we have a constant volume. So we had to use the combined gas law and kind of look at what the relationship between pressure and temperature is. But you can see that the relationship between pressure and temperature is the same as between volume and temperature. So um, they're Green directly related. Really. <laughs> what? Green is better. Really. Uh, okay, oh. number 17. Yeah. Is mine still going? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, number You're 17, draw an energy diagram for an endothermic reaction. We already did this once. Yeah, isn't that a... Uh, the... But label it. I did on the other one. The exo is the one that goes down. Yes, exothermic gives off energy, so it ends at a lower energy than but it starts. But this is endothermic, right? No, that's exothermic. It's exothermic. Oh. How is mine endo? No, that's right. This is exo. What? That's exo. Oh, so would it? It would. Um, it goes down. down? Like that? How does start? that work? It's um, kind of like this is gonna end before that one, like where it started. So oh, it okay. so it'd be like this. Okay, so label. Would you like yeah. that? Oh, I yeah. feel stupid. So, what is where is your um, activation energy on this drawing? Looks like that. Not the messed up drawing erase, but. <laughs> Yes. Your that activation one. energy is from the beginning to the top. And how about your delta H? It's um. Wait, yeah. Um. Delta H is enthalpy and energy. Oh, your battery's dead. Oh, is it? It's blinking red. Oh, turn it off. Turn it off. Like stop it completely. Yeah. Oh.